Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome you all to this session. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have a very special presenter. He is the CTO of Cash Telex Africa. And he's going to present to us about the, the Cash Telex mining infrastructure. I am very honored to be hosting him today and I'm very excited for what he will share with us today. CTO, I pass the mic to you. Uh, thank you so much, Salma. Uh, and thank you for the warm introduction. Uh, Salma is our pillar in the um, digital team, cash list digital team, who is doing a lot of wonderful work on a daily basis to keep us on the top of the game. So we appreciate your efforts and thank you so much for bringing me on stage tonight. Um, I would like to begin by making a quick check from the members who are available tonight for this training uh, to know exactly where we are uh, in terms of our knowledge on crypto mining as of now. Um, maybe some of us have taken time to to dig deep or have, have gone into the, the deeper waters, you know, as it were. Um, from this team, has anyone had the chance to be involved practically using of the mining software tools? Has anyone been able, had a chance to use any software platform? If you have done, used any mining platform or any software platform practically, can you please take for me one in the chat? Any, any existing platform? mining platform, if you've had a chance to work with any of them. Okay. Then has anyone from the team been able or had chance to before to be um, to be involved in computing uh, the profitability, the economics of mining? how to make money, how to not, you know, how much money you can make in a given time and so on. And depending on the situation, the, what you might, has anyone been involved in practically in working out the profitability of mining, the calculation and just like you work out the economics of a business. Anybody has done that, been involved somehow? Okay. How about um, seeing the mining setup, the infrastructure, the computers? I mean, I've been to a mining station, just like you go to a server room and you see the equipment, how it is lined up, how it's connected. Has anyone had a chance to visit a mining room? facility physically. Just type a one for me. Okay. How about interfacing with miners directly? 
have you had anyone had a conversation with somebody who is doing mining and sharing their story, what they're going through and how they're doing it and so on? Or any investor, somebody who has invested resources in mining and invest a businessman? Just take for me one. Okay, so uh, in this way then, we may have to stick to our step-by-step -step process, which we've been uh, advancing all this long, uh, to move together from the basics, just like we did with trading, crypto trading, that's, you know, step-by-step, we take a small portion, uh, you know, um, and then progressively move together forward to understand the process, what is involved, because of the key areas, the economics of mining, the legality of mining, the equipment involved, the infrastructure, the kind of setup we need, the way uh, the electricity uh, required is uh, structured for it to work for this facility, uh, then the business model, the investment that is required, and the returns to investment. Uh, then the legality, the country or the place, the environment where this infrastructure is, and what are the laws governing this, and what are the what is involved, and so on. There are so many dimensions. For in, if you talk about mining at that scale, at that level, but of course, like we say, it can happen also at a basic level where an individual from home can participate in this process. Um, we shall go step by step, uh, build a little bit on from where we stopped last time. Uh, again, taking our time to make sure that we carry everybody along. Let me begin by asking the members, can somebody share with us from what last shared last time, what are the steps, the steps that are taken in the mining process? Say one, two, three, four. What are the steps? Can somebody share? The steps. One, two, three, four, five, like that. What are the steps? based on what we shared before. Hello. Anyone like to share the steps? Yes, the first thing is to get to know how mining is done. Oh. Yes. Yeah, yes, in terms of steps, one, two, three, four, yes. Yes, get to know, train how the mining is done, get the equipment, all right, and maybe either work at home or get into a group of people, of miners, and uh, get to know the company you're mining from, you know, the, the, the kind of this or maybe a money or something, instruction on how to, how, you know, the, the, the crypto, the coin is going to be mined. That's what I can make of it. Okay. Maybe. It's a good start, Prof. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> The network is not very good from your side. Let's see. Because we cannot hear you well. Could you try to change? 
location uh, a bit. Uh, uh, let's take a client making a transaction. Okay. Uh, a client, uh, the location. Yes. The, Who is the host? Uh, no, it's not very clear. Yes. Yeah? Who is the host here? You should tell him, text him to 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 type his his message. Okay, I remember um, where a client makes uh, a transaction and then a team of people or miners that are meant to be approving that. Then there's a phase of uh, uh, creating a block. And then there's also a phase of uh, creating a block. And then after the block, there's I think approval and then, hey, something like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's a good one. Um, so, meaning uh, that it's a comprehensive process, basically. You know, which begins from somewhere and which may require, you know, putting together many resources. Uh, of course, we have mentioned before and we mention again that what you're doing in mining is basically validating transactions. You're validating transactions, you're adding new blocks, and who does this job? It is the miners. The miners. Powerful computer hardware, which is solving complex mathematical equations. And when they do this, they're compensated compensated within of the cryptocurrency. At least from starters, that's where we started from. Then these miners, like we said before, they are competing basically. They're competing to solve equations or puzzles. The one who solves the equation first, and adds the new block to the blockchain is rewarded. How? That one is rewarded with a new unit of the uh, cryptocurrency. Once that reward comes in, one is free either to sell it or one can hold it as an investment. So therefore, as we look at mining, it is an integral component of the cryptocurrency system. It's a component of the system. It is helping to protect the integrity and to bolster the integrity. It is giving the individuals a way Participate. Participate in the market and also earn some profits by contributing. Empowering it. Again, we have to emphasize that mining is expensive. It can be quite expensive. Why? Because you need a substantial amount of technical knowledge. The knowledge itself, and you also need a substantial investment in terms of the hardware and the software, this, the hardware tools especially. Then you need also a substantial amount of investment towards the cost of power, electricity. 
those are basically foundational concepts that we must be familiar with. But for those who are looking for passive income, maybe it could be one of them. You see? And therefore, before one gets involved in this, one should understand the economics of this industry. One should be able to understand, to have projections of potential profit that he, can, he or she can have from this. Potential rewards. For those who are looking at it from a business perspective, yes, just like you come up with a simulation of profitability, for those who are familiar with business, NPV, IRR, internal rate of return, net present value, and the different matrices that help you to visualize what could happen. If you're looking at, at, at it as an investment, then you can know the rate of return when you break even so that you can have a break even analysis and figures that can be a basis for you to look at this as a business in that sense. And if you're going to invest or secure resources from somewhere, then go ahead to determine when you can be able to return uh, whatever you have been able to secure from somewhere and make a profit for yourself in that sense. So however it can be done, like we said before, somebody can do it on his own. All of us, each one of us can be involved. All of us can be involved. We can just be involved. But at the same time, companies which are already well-established, for them, actually, it's much easier because they have the infrastructure in place already. See? So, generally speaking, once we get involved, let us remember that it's really uh, a bit of work, some effort you have to put in, to do the mine, to mine a block. And then that competition, once you have more people coming in, once there's an increment in the number of miners who are joining the network, it makes the solving of the puzzle, the equation you're talking about, more, more difficult. It becomes, it's, a, it's, a, it's called hashing, you know? Hashing, without becoming very technical, the hashing difficulty. Greater difficulty once you have more miners involved in the network. So, however, like we say, when the difficulty increases, then... Sometimes some people may be, you know, they say may leave the network and say, oh, we better do other things. Then this, those who are resilient can also have chance in that way to mine new blocks and becomes easier for those who remain behind, those who are resilient and remain focused on what they are doing. So if you want to earn some revenue as an individual, that's what you're in for a bit of competition and becomes, of course, tough for the big cryptocurrencies, the large ones like Bitcoin, Litecoin and others, which are already, you know, big. It becomes very tough because of the conditions. However, for new ones, which don't have big numbers as yet, it could be an opening for you because you could be the, among the champions, the pioneers. So those who want to go into cash tricks have a chance now. Because like we say, today cash tricks may appear to be what it is, but definitely when the process starts evolving, you'll see many of the economics changing. So the smart guys have an opportunity to make a kill in this regard. So, um,
Therefore, for one who is looking at it as a business, one looking at it as a way of earning revenue, it's worthwhile investing in powerful machines or even joining mining pools to increase the chances of getting rewarded. So, smaller miners could be advised to always, if they're looking around for business, they should look for altcoins or networks which are less congested. Because for them now, they give you better potential because of their untapped resources and they require less energy consumption because the computational power required is not that high. The only challenge is that if you're doing altcoins, the alternative coins, the alternatives to the mainstream, they are highly volatile sometimes. And also there are some other worries, you know, in the protocol uh, that sometimes you may be required to upgrade your mining rigs and find yourself spending more money than what you're earning. So, therefore, generally speaking, the process that one has to go through, you have to begin by choosing the cryptocurrency you're going to mine. Which one are you choosing? Which one? Because the difficulty and so on, what is involved will definitely be, the effort needed will be determined from that in terms of the economics. So which currency are you going to use? Are you going to mine? For us in cash telex, it is clear that we are focusing on our own. So if, if you look at it from that side, then you don't have to go through the steps. But at this stage now, looking at it in general, you begin by choosing which one. Then number two, you choose the equipment that you're going to use. You need good machines, you need good hardware, so that you have good chances of competing. There are some specialized equipments that miner, the miners use, and they are specifically designed for this task. And the way they work, they, are, they have enhanced, um, you know, graphical cards, and therefore they're effective, depending on the difficulty and different algorithm they're using. While we're seeing all this, emphasizing that yes, it's important to make sure that you have the necessary hardware for mining the chosen cryptocurrency in the first step because the one that you chose will have its own dynamics, its own unique elements. Then, as step number three, you need to create the wallet which you are going to use to receive the rewards when mining the currency. There are so many good wallets around which are preferred for many of the miners. And when you look at the statistics, um, you'll see many options which where most of the miners are you know, selecting. I mean, a study of, of different uh miners and their preferences in terms of wallets many of them are going for nexo 
Queen Bess for the non custodial types uh, crypto wallets. Others go for Ledger, Trezor, Safepal. These are all good hardware wallets, which uh, are considered to be also very safe in this regard. So once your wallet is set up, then you can have an address which you can use to receive and store your digital coins when they come in, the digital assets. So, and once you're done with that, then you have to configure as step number four, your crypto miner device. For this, you have to download specialized mining software. And you have to be careful about this because that software should come from the company, the official website of the company you intend to mine from. For the, this is the only way you can guarantee that the version you're mining is you're downloading is correct and it uh, protects you from accessing scams, programs that are not that are fraudulent in a way. So for us in Cash Telex, we shall, like you know, we announced before, our tools are already assembled and will be opened to our community to access them. And they'll be, they'll have the freedom to use any platform that is convenient for them as you go along. So, uh, the software is free to download and to use, at least most of it. And it gives you multiple storage platforms, and various operating systems, Windows, Linux, and so on. Of course, one should do some homework in, before selecting a software out of what is available. And one should also have a strategy to monitor the electricity costs, how much power you need before setting up a mining device. Because you should have an idea of the past bills, the cost of mining, you know, because like you said, the energy consumption is very high from mining rigs. And you spend, you may end up spending a lot more than what you're earning. So that's why it is important to, you know, have a strategy for this as you do the setup. Again, the place where you set it up, you have to also keep this in mind that the mining grids can be noisy and can generate a lot of heat. So therefore, consider placing them in a secure area with good cooling systems, adequate cooling. Also, it's a good idea to place them in a where you you not I mean, you not you not keep anyone awake at night. You are comfortable where they are and you, they are secure, and you don't have somebody doesn't have to stay there all the time. Otherwise, imagine you know how troublesome this could be. Okay, when you're done with that, when you have clearly selected and configured your crypto miner device, keeping all these other parameters in mind, step number five, you may choose to join a mining pool. Why? If you mine as an individual, and video miner, they have very small chance of success. Because only one block is minted at a time and the reward has to go to the first miner who finds the correct hash. In one of these uh, sessions, we shall illustrate how this uh, mechanism works and look at the hash, the hash 
how it's generated, what it means, and so on. We shall look at them in one of the sessions as we become more familiar now with the process. So, even when you have a powerful, dedicated machine or setup, the hashing, which you've been talking about, the hashing power, if the hashing power is still small, you know, then you're, you're not competitive in this case. However, if you join a mining pool and you combine your computing power with many participants, then the chances of discovering the new block, the next one, well, is much higher. Because when you join a pool, it's like you're pulling your hashing power. And the potential for earning more money than when you're working alone is much higher in this case. You'll have a coordinator who is organizing the miners so that, you know, you have less mistakes. It's more organized, more structured. When the mining pool get, discovers a new block, they split the rewards accordingly between the participants, according to the mining power. Of course, there will be a small fee, which is subtracted from the reward when it comes in. And it's, it's at that moment, uh, when this is done, it's... Uh, You know, it's when you have the reward in your in front of you, it's quite exciting. It's uh, you have something to hold on to because you've been able to to win the race, solve the puzzle, and in that way, you know, you you it's exciting. It's uh, it's, uh, it's time to celebrate the, the goodies, as it were. So. Overall, the process would somehow run, run like that. Um, and one who is able to, to win this competition can have a moment to reflect and say, okay, yes, this is doing good, it's working for me. And therefore, I can be able to enjoy the benefits. So once again, I say, generally speaking, if you're going in this industry, you choose your cryptocurrency as your first step. Then choose your mining equipment based on your plan. That's number two. Then create the wallet which you're going to use, receiving your rewards. That's number three. Then configure your miner device. That's your number four. Then Consider whether you're going to work alone or join a mining pool. That's number five. If you're moving in this direction, then you're set to go in this regard. We need to mention also, as we talk about mining now, at, at this level, this is our second session, right? At this moment, you can mention that there are different methods. There are different methods. Different methods that you can use. And they're distinct. We can have time to look at them. There's CPU mining. There's GPU mining. There's FGPA mining. There's ASIC mining. Cloud mining, different methods. And each of them is unique in its own way. And we shall take time to look at them a bit more in detail so that, uh, you know, in a way we are empowered sufficiently. But what we need to mention is that 
once you become a professional or you really want to be in this area, then you have to go explore all this uh, in a very practical way so that you can see which of the methods is most appropriate in your context and which one is going to be preferred. The young people many days these days uh, and those who are coming in with the good power of technology, especially from Africa and others, they, they, they have gone into cloud mining. And for them, you know, they, they, they can work with the, any provider who is out there and work out, make a contract, so on. And then, you know, they're able to determine whether it is good for them and carry on in this way without necessarily going into the other investments which are more costly. So having said that also, for us now who are here, would be interested in questions of legality. Is crypto mining legal? Is it legal? This varies from country to country. So in places where you know, the people are allowed to use Bitcoin and so on, then crypto mining should be different legal. And in fact, it is encouraged. So one should be able to do some research, know the laws of your location before you learn how to manage that particular, particular cryptocurrency. You may have some specific rules which have been given by the government or the requirements which should be considered. So that's why we say, just like you do feasibility for any business that you do, you should also do feasibility for your mining uh, investment or engagement as it were. The other question would be, is mining crypto worth? Is it worth? When you have all these factors, which could affect your profits, the machines, the performance, the price of the cars itself, then all this That's why we say, think about your budget of investment after making a proper study. That's where you make a decision and say, oh, maybe I can go for a cloud mining solution. You see, a cloud mining solution where now the laptop you're using which is less powerful. And, or even the disk you're using can provide for you, uh, you know, a cost-effective alternative that you can uh, depend on to make sure that what you're doing is profitable. So, but the emphasis is clear, like we said in the beginning, that computational energy, amount of computational energy, the high energy consumption, which you, which is part of the traditional mining, as it were, denotes a lot of heat, which can eventually damage your PC, your laptop, the fans, because there's excessive strain placed on this during the operation. So that is something also that we need to keep in mind as we do go through the planning process and whatever we have to do. However, um, there are those who go into this mining because it's exciting, it's a new world, Mining a computer currency, it is fun for them. They want to be involved in the world of tomorrow, the crypto world. Some may go in this. 
So, and actually, as you look at the future, you'll see more young people who would actually go into this because of this reason. There will be others who want to be, to play a role in keeping the blockchain secure and functional. And from what you have explained here, that mining the currency is one piece of the puzzle which guarantees security, secure blockchain, functional blockchain. And for one who is, is, who is going in for this uh, goal, then you can sit down and calculate what is the cost of maintaining your hardware, what is the city bill, how much is, you know, what risk is going to be involved and so on, so that you contribute in sustaining and expanding and running the network but at the same time, your economics are right. And just like we said before at the beginning, uh, the research that you do in the beginning is important so that we can remain on the top of the game. There will be other questions. Can I mine crypto on my phone? Can I mine crypto at home? Can I mine, can I try to minimize the taxes involved? Is mining bad for the environment? Can I mine crypto on my laptop? Well, these are all questions that have very simple answers. You can mine crypto on your phone. It's possible. When you have a smartphone, you can do it. But is it profitable? Look at the processing power on your phone. Can you compete with dedicated mining equipment, which is specialized? On the other hand, once you use your phone, then imagine the battery will be drained very, very fast. And you'll find this uh, smartphone overheating, which could be damaging the phone itself. So it's possible to do it, but it's not recommended. It's not reliable. It's not reliable. Then, can I mine from home? Can I mine my crypto from home? Why not? Yes, you can. But remember the risks associated with it. Remember that you need to have some technical knowledge, some degree of technical knowledge, especially in terms of setting up your equipment. Remember the consideration, the electricity costs and the potential returns, the profit you expect, the income. So that's why you need to do the initial study to understand how this works. Then Again, somebody may be asking, is URA or the tax authority in my country, is it going to come for me? What are the taxes that I have to pay? If it is considered as a business in your country, these guys will come, definitely. They are going to subject you to taxation and the laws of the land have to apply. This vary from one country to the other. So that's where you have to deal with your tax consultant, whoever it is, to understand the regulations, depending on where you are. Then the environmentalists will ask the people in this area, is mining cryptocurrency bad for the environment? Is it bad? You can see already, like we say, it requires some amount of energy. Yes, it can have some negative impact on the environment. 
and when you use high electricity, it also increases the emission of carbon dioxide. So, and this could result in some environmental pollution as it were. However, this can be minimized when you use renewable energy resource, sources that are available today. These are quite a number which are being adopted by many countries, many places. So people are using wind, they're using solar power. All these, these are very good alternatives which are coming in to have a, to, uh, you know, guarantee a safer environment for today and tomorrow. And this should be encouraged, you know, even in our other, you know, um, areas of, you know, power need. Okay, so how about, can I mind using my laptop, which is in front of me? So why not? Why not? The same question that you asked before on the phone applies here. Is that the most efficient way? The most profitable way for you? Because these laptops are not designed for high intensity processing, which is required for mining. Their graphics processing or GPUs are a bit weak. They're not as powerful. If you compare them with desktops, which are specialized, these are weaker. Then the heat generated during the mining process also can damage the machine and the internal components. And therefore, instead of your laptop lasting three years or four years at full performance, its lifespan could be drastically affected and reduced. So um, in our baby steps, which you've been taking, this, uh, this, this highlights can help us bring this conversation, the general conversation before we go down to our specific one, uh, brings it closer, closer for us. What you're going to do in cash telex would be much more specific much more specific as we shall see and that's why when you understand the um process as it is today once you understand the process as it is today for those who are into this industry it helps us to appreciate our journey as cash telex. And subsequently, it helps us to figure out how to maximize the benefits, you know, coming forth. Um, in this slide, what I can only highlight for us as we round up our discussion for today, is um, we already emphasized the need for you to do your research. When before you start, do some groundwork, make sure you figure out the cryptocurrency you want to mine and the details. Then Prepare your equipment, upgrade your hardware if you have the equipment. So upgrade it according to the currency you want to involved in, be involved in. The upgrade of your computer, your system, and so on is important. Do it, the equipment, so that you can be competitive. The wallet, you select the wallet. And we said there are many options available depending on the coin that you want to mine. And 
Uh, we also mentioned you can have some uh, cold wallets which provide a very safe uh, storage for your digital assets. The software, yes, this is important, the mining software, which is going to enable you control the process, the intelligence for you as you run through the mining as it happens. You said you can join a pool, can be part of a group of miners working together, and then you share the rewards accordingly. But be careful about the reputation of the group uh, because it could be one of the determining factors also. Well, it's important to mention that actually mining per se beyond crypto it can be used, it is an essential process in many other operations. It is the verification process behind blockchain technology. So wherever I see blockchain applied, mining is playing an essential role for the technology. That's why operations like the banking systems, like healthcare and maintenance of medical records, real estate transactions, record keeping by government, passport records, national ID records, records of birth, who is being born, babies born, and when, and how, and so on. Those kinds of records, blockchain will make wonders for this. Identity management and voting, so going into elections and so on. If the country is genuinely interested in a fair election, this technology will make wonders. And we're saying the mining process in the background will provide a solid foundation for this to happen. So, um, well, this is an example of the equipment that we have been talking about. It could be extensive, it could be a huge infrastructure, it could be whole, you know, area, buildings, which have these machines in place. That's what is happening in Russia. That's what is happening in some of these countries which are regarded to be very good. Uh, they have good power supply, which is electricity, which is very cheap. So that's why many of the big companies, big players have set up their equipment uh, to take advantage of the low cost of electricity. The hardware you need, like we said before, it's just a recap, a good central processing unit and a good motherboard, a good operating system. The graphics card is important. So an enhanced graphics card in your system, in your computer. Then the specialized ASIC chips. Then the power and the cooling system, the fan. So we have mentioned this about the processor, very important, and also the motherboard. So look for one which at least has three video card slots so that you can enhance your graphical capabilities. So, and your motherboard should be expandable in this case. We mentioned 
a few words already about the software. Be careful that you are fine. You're using the right software, selecting the right software, which is suitable for you. And there are a couple of software tools which are out there that we can explore also. Like Sigi Minor. Considered to be stable for the long run and therefore a popular choice for the miners. What makes it unique? It has fan speed control, overlocking capabilities, and so on and so forth. It has remote interface capabilities. So if your, your setup is somewhere, you know, in a cool area, very far away from your home or your office, then the remote interface capability in order to monitor what is happening in real time at your facility. Then BFG minor also similar to CG minor, but its strength is more on the processing capabilities. It can harness the speed from the specialized mining equipment and make use of it and has many features. The other is Malt Miner, quite popular also, easy to use, customizable, and it can scan your hardware for you and subsequently, um, depending on your choice of the cryptocurrency, it's one of the things that you could consider. Okay, so uh, the time has run out from what I can see, our time, the time that we have. Uh, we chose to move in this way again. But once we have now a good foundation, a good background, you'll find as we move into our cash lakes environment, you'll appreciate and be very happy because ours is a much more simplified setup. We are using a slightly different algorithm and we're using different set of tools, which makes it easier. And hopefully some of you may be motivated to be part of the mining teams. Okay, I would like for today, stop at this point and return the mic to the moderator, the, the host, because we run out of time. Uh, maybe there's some questions uh, and hopefully uh, in the next session, we can, if we have a chance, we can go even a little bit more deeper for you to appreciate, you know, what you're going to be doing in Cash Telex as something special and unique. And therefore, it's one of the strengths that makes Cash Telex stand out and unique from an existing cryptocurrencies and an existing setup of infrastructure. Thank you so much. I turn the mic back to. Salma. Yes, thank you. Thank you for the powerful presentation, our CTO. It was a great learning experience. So ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our session. I would like to thank you all for attending and until we meet again, have a good night. Mm -hmm.